If you're an athlete, you know the greatest motivator of all is the fear of letting your teammates down. After all, a team is only as good as its weakest link. So you owe it to those wearing the same jersey as you to be your best every time you step on the field. That's why there's no vape in team. When you vape, you can expose your lungs to toxic chemicals that can damage your lungs. If you're a step behind, the team's a step behind. Brought to you by The Real Cost and the FDA. What's up, everybody? This is Dark Mesic with Brutally Delicious, coming into the review of Orden Ogan's brand new album, The Order of Fear. So I have reviewed Orden Ogan before. I saw them once on 70,000 Tons of Metal 2017, I think. I would consider myself to be a decent fan of them. I don't know every single song, but I would certainly see them if they came around or if they were on the ship again. I thought their song Gunman was one of the best songs of the year 2017. So going into this, my expectations were pretty high, and they were surpassed even. For those unfamiliar, Orden Ogin is some kind of melodic power, something fast metal with good singing. They have a darker streak to them. They definitely don't sound like Twilight Force or Bloodbound, but they're in that melodic sort of power metal genre. The Order of Fear probably does not invent anything brand new, but I think it's a fantastic continuation of what they're already doing without sounding bored or rehashed yet. Let's talk about some songs. The album opener, Kings of the Underworld, starts off ripping right away. I didn't pay attention to song titles or lengths, so I generally assumed for a band of this style that the first track is going to be some bullshit 90-second atmospheric intro that they use to walk out on stage to. Imagine my surprise when the band is all guns blazing from the first second. Stylistically, it's kind of similar to the song Gunman. It's upbeat, it's melodic, it's heavy, and it's unmistakably Orden Ogin. There's a killer solo in this song. That doesn't happen with songs that are very high tempo. It's a lot easier to have a memorable shreddy guitar solo in something like the band Rat, where the tempos are mid, but that means the guitar stands out so much more. When the band's going 180 BPM double bass, it's really hard to do something that stands out, and somehow they fucking pulled it off. Conquest. So here's another great entry in the Orden Ogin canon. It's unmistakably the same exact style we're talking about, but it's melodic, there's a really fun chorus, and perhaps most importantly, this is a clear jump song. Some of you might know that power metal bands have a song, or in Sabaton's case, like 10, where they tell the audience, jump, jump, jump. It's often on one where it's not 200 beats per minute. It works very well in a live setting because you can't be Slayer and play everything super fast for your two-hour set. I consider it a hallmark of all power metal bands and specifically power metal shows. Prince of Sorrow. Here's a fun song. It's kind of jumpy. I don't mean in the way that Conquest is a jump song, but the way that this riff bounces. Listen to it and tell me how dumb I am. It almost reminds me of Unleash the Archers. That's kind of weird because Orton Ogan is a much older band. Their first album was, I think, 2004, and Unleash the Archers is from the last 10 years or so that anyone really knew who they were. Stylistically, anyway, the vocals are obviously very different, but listen to that riff and tell me if it reminds you of some songs on Abyss. I can't even identify a particular one. I want to pause here to bring up again how much the solos on this album fucking kill. Why does no one talk about this? When people talk about Orden Ogren, they're talking about, you know, the great choruses and how the vocals aren't super high tenor but are still impressive. These guitar solos have me, like, wanting to play again. It's so inspiring and exciting and adds life to songs where oftentimes solos are a bit of an afterthought. My Worst Enemy. No, this is not a cover of that My Car Is In The Front Yard 90s song. This is a slower song from them. I mean, not all of their hits are burners, and but this is slow even compared to something like Fever. The result is that it sounds particularly heartfelt. And this is a band that I don't think often writes about stuff like Inner Struggle. I think they have a storyline going through their album. Maybe it's like... Sorry to divert away from metal, but Wake Me Up When September Ends by Green Day is part of an album with a story going through it, but people can relate to that one outside of it. Lastly, Anthem to the Dark Side. It probably benefits from being sequenced right after My Worst Enemy, but this is a great burner with a lot of urgency to it. 
It feels like a chase scene in a fantasy movie. Like you're on horseback trying to get the evil baron who's kidnapped a princess or something. Alternatively, you could do like, you know, a Western movie where you're chasing the train with a horse, but that was basically the gunman music video. It felt different. Okay, so we've got an album of the year contender right here. What's probably most interesting to me is that there's a couple songs I want to revisit, but I'm viewing this as, you know, a complete album. It almost does it a disservice to be singling out songs in the way that I normally do, because I think this flows really well and has a whole lot of excitement, more so than, say, the singles would suggest. And that way, I'm reminded of Nightfall and Middle Earth by Blind Guardian, where obviously there are standouts like Time Stands Still at the Iron Hill, but the crowning accomplishment is how the entire thing flows. Thanks for this, dudes. Loved it. Come back on 70,000 Tons of Metal, please. Rock on. Hey everyone, this is Tuck from Fit for a King in Off-Road Minivan. Every week I bring you fun interviews alongside your favorite metalcore entertainers with my new podcast, Get Tucked. Join me every Monday with bands like Counterparts, Crystal Lake, like Moths to Flames, and many more. We play unsigned and undiscovered bands, deep dive into each artist's history, and of course provide the greatest breakdowns in current metalcore. Tune in to Get Tucked every Monday, out now through Sound Talent Media.